Hello and welcome to today's video, and no, I don't actually think you're dumb, but these are five essential things you must know about the Mark 8 Fiesta ST. It just so happens that these five things are also really common questions on the owners group forums on Facebook and other places like that. So if you want to look like you know what you're talking about, make sure you give this video a watch before all the club members ridicule you. Now I must mention. The Owners Club group on Facebook is a nice place to be, lots of handy people, but they're sick to death of hearing about these five things. So let me clear them up once and for all. Let's go. So the first thing we're going to talk about is tyre sizes. Now, from the factory, these have 205 tyres, and also from the factory, the car has 200 horsepower. So this is a recipe for making those tyres not last very long. <laughs> oh no! 205 tyres, what's the problem you ask? Well, they're actually quite expensive if you're going to buy another set of them. So a lot of people are wondering if they can save a bit of money and get slightly wider tyres by buying 225 width tyres. And the answer is yes. Even if your car is lowered a little bit, you're going to get away with putting these on without ripping your arches off or without shredding your tyres on the arches. Even at full lock, you're not going to hit anything. That is unless you have the rally flaps, like the, the mud flaps, in which case they like to chew them off. So with the rally flaps, no, otherwise yes, even when lowered and with spacers. Up next we are going to talk about remaps and which one you should buy. Now I must stress that there's a three year warranty on your car from the factory and if you get a remap it will stop that engine part of the warranty. Your interior and stuff will still be covered, but the engine itself will not be covered anymore. So, people ask me a lot, which one should they get? Now, honestly, I don't think it matters. I've not heard anyone complain about any remaps. So, basically just get the one you're the happiest with. I went for TRS. Other ones you can get sent to include Mountain. Now they've got a new one, 265 package. Just go with what you want. If you know the man that owns Revo and he'll do it for free, go with Revo. That just makes sense. So just go with whatever you want. Give it a try. Tell me how it is in the comments below. Now this next one I'm going to talk about only really benefits those people buying a second hand Fiesta ST. And that is how you can tell if you have the performance pack. Some websites might not list it and if you are trying one that's not listed it might be a bargain because the performance pack was arguably the best optional extra to get on the car from new. And there's a three ways you can tell if your car has the performance pack. The first is if your car has launch control. You can see it here, it will say launch control in a little box on that screen. You push it, some flags appear showing you have launch control. The other way you can activate launch control is in this car settings menu. You go to vehicle settings and there you have it again, launch control. Now the second way you can check if you have the performance pack is the shift indicator light. You can see it there, it's the little ST kind of outline and uh, in this clip here I'll show you when you get up near the red light it's going to flash orange at you and it will only do that if you have the performance pack. That is unless someone has plugged an OBD in and used Forescan to activate both launch control and the shift light and in that case you will have to use the third way. The third way to check if you have the performance pack is probably the most annoying but it's the only definitive way to see if you have the limited slip diff installed and that is to get someone who knows what they're doing to have a look for it. They'll be able to tell you if there's a limited slip diff installed on your car. Um, other than that you might be able to tell from driving but every Fiesta ST has torque vectoring by braking installed which means that even if you are turning around a corner, it may not slip the inside wheel as much as you might think as it will apply the brakes to that wheel in sport mode. So you will have to go into racetrack mode in order to turn that off and to definitively decide if your car has the limited slip diff or not. So good luck finding that one out, that's probably the hardest thing to do on this list. The next thing we're going to talk about is called wheel hop. And wheel hop, if you're unfamiliar, is when you put your foot down and the actual front wheels do come off the ground a little bit, you lose traction, you go slower, and also your engine shakes about in the engine bay, which is what causes the wheels to hop. And it kind of builds up and it adds up until you're just making a massive noise and not really going anywhere. So a way to fix this, which I have done, is you install one of these, which is called a torque mount. And it basically goes at the bottom of your engine 
and when your engine tries to push back it's resisted by that and uh, yeah it's pretty much an engine mount but it tries to resist your engine pushing back when you get on the power and you notice the stock one is really soft and flimsy that one you saw me using was a poly bush so much harder you get more vibrations inside but you can say goodbye to wheel hop and finally I'm going to talk to you about the drive modes. Now obviously this car has three main drive modes and I say main drive modes, I'll get into that later. And the three main drive modes are normal mode, basically traction stability control all the way on, exhaust valve closed, nice sensible driving, and you have your cylinder deactivation on that mode as well so you can be nice and economical. Sport mode kind of amps up the pressure a little bit. You still have the torque vectoring by braking. Your traction stability control are still on. Your exhaust opens up and your steering gets a little bit heavier so you feel a bit sportier. Now in track mode, the traction control is turned completely off. You can lay down rubber for miles. The stability control is still on but it's not on as much. It will let you slip a bit but it won't let you spin out. And also the valves are open, you have no cylinder deactivation, you have no torque vectoring by braking, you are pretty much on your own apart from that stability control. So I mentioned the valves opening and closing, let's listen to what difference that makes. And I said three main driving modes because next to the driving mode button is this one that says ESC off. So we're in normal mode just now, I'm going to push the ESC off button and obviously the ESC off button turns off the traction control if you just push it once, which is a bit odd. In order to turn off the stability control and the traction control completely, you have to hold that button down for five seconds. Okay, do you get it? <laughs> that is good. Okay, so hopefully this video has made your introduction to the Fiesta owner forums much more friendly and there'll be less people telling you to use the search function as I see so many times other things. So I've made this video in order to try and help some people out. Thank you very much for watching this video. I've also got a lot of Fiesta ST content on this channel so if you have any other questions, check that first. If you can't find it, ask me and there might be a video coming on it sooner than you think. So thank you very much for watching this video. Check out these two videos uh, that YouTube thinks you will quite like. And until next time, have a good one.